So here I've got my Windows Server 2012 machine already built and it's already a Dominion controller and it's also running DNS. So networking, you can see I've got two network cards. The first is the primary one. It's got the IP address of this machine, which is dot twenty. And you can see I've got a secondary NIC that is on the same subnet. It doesn't have a gateway. And that's what my remote clients are going to connect to, NIC2. They'll be presented with NIC1, but they'll actually connect to NIC2. So I need to add a role. So go into Server Manager, launch the Add Roles and Features Wizard. Next, Role Based Next. Next, and I need Active Directory Certificate Services because I want to use a self signed certificate. Obviously, if you have purchased a certificate, then you won't need to do this. Certification Authority, and we want Certification Authority Web Enrollment as well. Accept all the defaults and select Install. Now, for the sake of the video, I've sped this up a little. But when it's done, simply click close. Now you'll see up at the top we have all the bits to do to configure certificate services. So if we open that up, I want to use the default credentials. I'm going to configure certification authority and certification authority web enrollment. Next. I'm going to select Enterprise CA and it's going to be a root CA create a new private key that's all fine, accept the defaults I'm not going to bother changing the name 5 years is fine for what I need next configure and that's my certification authority configured so if we just move that down, if I drop to the run prompt and open a Microsoft Management Console by running MMC, file add remove snapping, and I want to add in the certification authority snapping. Local computer, next, OK. So if I expand that out, out, right down at the bottom are the certificate templates. And what I'm going to do is, from within there, I'm going to select Manage. And I'm going to make a copy of an existing template. The one I'm going to use is the IPSEC template. So if I just right click and select Duplicate Template. On the General tab, it'll be called Copy of Except by default. So we're going to change that. SSTP dash VPN. Now go to the request handling tab and make sure that the allow private key to be exported option is ticked and on subject name select supply the request and click OK. And finally on the extensions tab select policies edit add And scroll down. The one that we want is server authentication. Click OK to add that in. Click OK. Apply OK. Let's close that down. Now back in the main certificate if we right click templates and select SSTP VPN click OK 
Now close our MMC and open the run command again. Now I'm just going to launch the uh, firewall configuration. I'm simply going to disable the firewall on this machine because I've got a corporate firewall in front of me. If this was internet facing you might simply want to open um, TCP port 443 for HTTPS and or TTP 80 if you want to access um, your certificate services on port 80. That's very much up to you but you only need port 443 open. Now the user that I want to grant access to if you go into his properties and on the dial in tab simply select allow access. That gives that user the ability to connect via remote VPN. So I'm going to add roles and services once again Next, role based, next, and the one I want to add in is network policy and access services. Next, 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 and install. When it's done, simply click close. Now we need to add on. Once again, click next. Again, select all the defaults. And scroll down, and the one that we want to pick this time is a remote access. Next next, next. Tick root in, next and install. Again for the purpose of the video I've sped this up and when it's done simply click close. No, I don't want to run the wizard. Close that down. Okay, now, once again, I'm going to launch a Microsoft Management Console. But this time, the snap-in I'm going to add in is simply the certificates snap-in for the computer account. Click Next. Finish. OK. Let's maximize that so we can see what we're doing. Expand personal and right click all tasks request new certificate. Next, next, and we should see our SSTP VPN certificate. At the minute, even if we select it, we can't enroll because of what it says underneath. It says more information is required so simply click on that link and all that we need to do is add in the common name for the certificate and this will be the public name that you will have to type in to connect to VPN. You'll need a public air record for this and it will need to point to your firewall and you'll need to have TCP port 443 or HTTPS either open for the public IP of this server or port forwarded to it. Now that's enrolled, I'm going to close the Microsoft Management Console down and now I'm going to open the Routing and Remote Access Management Console. Let's maximize that. Right click the server itself and select configure and enable routing and remote access. At the wizard, click next. Accept the default next. We select VPN. Next. We're going to actually be connected to NIC1, which is dot 20. That's our internet face. And I'm going to untick that, otherwise, it knocks off RDP and all other manner of stuff that I want to use. And I am going to create a pool of IP addresses to lease to my VPN clients that is on the same range 
if you wanted it to be on a different range you would also have to configure NAT and your NIC2 would have to be on the same range that you're leasing out here. Obviously make sure these IP addresses are not included in your normal DHCP scope or you're going to get conflicts and problems. Next, no I don't want to configure or use a radius server. Next. And finish. Okay. Okay. Um, we should get some service started and stop in. And another one, here we go. So if you right click the server itself and select properties, uh, on the security tab right down at the bottom you'll see we need to change the certificate so it matches the one that we have just created vpn.pnl.com, click apply, yes and it'll want to start services, stop and start services again and if you click on the IPv4 tab you'll see there's the range of IP addresses that we've configured for our remote clients and you'll also see that they're going to connect to NIC2 OK. Now, I'm jumping onto a client that is outside the network. It's out on the public internet. And the first thing I need to do is get the root certificate imported on this machine. Now, I've got port 80 open, so I can connect straight to that machine that's running certificate services from out on the internet by simply connecting to the public IP cert SRV you'll notice I'm going down on HTTP there if you wanted security HTTPS then you would need to do that if you only wanted the one port open log on with your domain credentials and I would download a CA certificate because I want the root certificate download the CA certificate and I'm going to save that on the desktop of this machine so I know where it is and I'm simply going to call it root Cert. Click save. Just minimise that to get it out of the way. There it is there. So if you double click that it's got a habit of putting it in your user settings. So I'm going to once again open an MMC and add in the certificates. This time for a computer account. Click next. Click finish. OK. And I'm manually going to put it in the trusted root certification authorities folder. I can either right click there and go to all tasks or up at certificates I can right click all tasks import and browse for the root certificate that we've just downloaded remember I'll put it on the desktop there it is there next finish just to prove it's not all smoke and mirrors it'll appear there it is there we now trust any certificates that have been issued by that certification authority Another thing that you're going to need to do, because we're using a self-signed certificate, open the registry editor and go to HQ Local Machine, System, Current Control Set, Services, SSTP Service Parameters, and create a 32-bit D word called No Cert Revocation Check and set its value to 1. You shouldn't need to do that with a publicly purchased certificate, although in some cases you may if you can't see the CRL for that certification authority. So now I've set up my VPN connection. If I set up a new connection and select connect to a workplace, next I'm going to use my internet connection and remember the public A record and the common name on my certificate is vpn.pnl.com. I'm going to give it a short name just so I know what it is. Just call it VPN and I'm going to tick the box to allow any user off the computer to be able to use it. Click next, put in my domain credentials, which is my username, my password. I'm going to tick the box to remember this password, you don't need to do that. And I'm going to put in my domain name as well. And click connect. And if I've done it correctly, after a few seconds, you'll see I'm now connected to the VPN server. And to prove it, if you remember the um, IP address of the server I was connected to, 
was 172.16.254.20 because I'm connected to the VPN I can ping the IP address and that's me connected via SSTP VPN thanks very much for watching don't forget to come and visit us at www.peaknetlife.com